This week we make the turn at Great Hayward Junction. We're on the staff of Worcester now, so we're at the bottom of what's known as the Four Counties Ring. Morning Gareth, morning Lou. I think there might be children in this place. There's a new chandlery just opened up that's replaced Midland Chandlers. Hello and welcome to Life on Board Amy Joe and this week we continue our journey northwards towards Chester. We leave our moorings just before Great Hayward Junction. We fill up with water and make the turn and head off up the Stafford Worcestershire Canal before mooring at Acton Trussell. The next day we carry on and end up mooring just outside Penkridge for the night before moving to Utherton Marina for our dental appointments in Chester. It's such a shame we couldn't stay the weekend and enjoy the floating market that was about to take place but our dental appointments had precedence and we had to move on to get Amy Jo into a marina so that we could make the train journey up to Chester for our appointments. Before we could start our journey, the first job was to go onto the services just beyond the junction and fill with water. Once filled with water, we then had to reverse back to the junction in order to make the turn onto the Stafford Worcester. Great Haywood Junction on the Trent and Mersey Canal was conceived as a way to provide a link between Liverpool and Hull, passing through the potteries. It was authorised by Act of Parliament in 1766 and with Jane Brindley acting as an engineer, its 93 miles or 150 kilometres were completed 11 years later in 1777. Brindley also built the Stafford Worcestershire Canal which began at much the same time as the Trent and Mersey and that was completed in 1772. It joined the Trent and Mersey Canal at Great Haywood and was part of his grand cross plan to link four English estuaries, the Humber, the Thames, the Severn and Mersey. Haywood Junction therefore became a major transport interchange. Well, we're making the turn now 
off of the Trent Mersey at Great Haywood and we're heading down the Stafford Worcester it's been a busy weekend here there's a trading market going on and uh, lots of trading boats moored up so but we've just been and filled up with water and now we're making our way down the Stafford Worcester today we're hoping to make for Acton Trussell This is the Anglo-Welsh hire fleet here at Great Haywood and uh, they don't make life very easy for boaters because they have their boats sticking right out in the canal but uh, we should just be able to squeeze through I think be a bit tight on the bow but there we go just passed over the aqueduct which actually passes over the river Trent from which the canal the Trent and Mersey gets its name just after making the turn at the junction we came across our vlogging friend Steve and Maxine on their boat never too late like us they also vlog and I'll leave a description to their channel in the description below morning. good morning Hi. We're just coming on to the Tixel White, which is also known as Tixel Broad. It's a body of water that forms part of the Stafford Worcestershire Canal near Tixel, Tixel in Staffordshire. The lake was probably created during the construction of the canal in 1771. At the time, the hall was owned by Thomas Clifford, fourth son of Hugh Clifford, and the grounds had been designed on the advice of the landscape architect Lancelot Capability Brown. It said that Clifford gave permission for the canal to pass through his land on the condition that it was made wide enough to look like a lake from the house and thus in order not to spoil the view. It's now a very popular overnight mooring spot and when you moor here or just pass through you have an excellent view of the magnificent Elizabethan gatehouse that is the only remaining part of Tixel Hall. It's also been suggested that the canal was routed to utilise a lake that already existed. Morning Gareth, morning Lou. 
How you doing? We knew we'd pass you today because we were watching your live yesterday. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate that. <laughs> We're currently passing over an aqueduct which crosses the River Sow or Sow. It's spelled S O W. I'm going to say it's Sow. And never far away, you can just see the railway in the background there. children in this place.
We found this lovely open mooring spot just outside Acton Trussell, so decided to pull in. Both Chris and I wondered about the strange name of Acton Trussell. And one of our viewers of our live channel actually found out the name Acton is derived from the Anglo-Saxon Actun, meaning oak and town. The Trussells were a Norman family who were early lords of the manor. Acton Trussell was also the birthplace of entertainer Patrick Fife. For those of you who might not know, was one half of the popular comedy duo Hinge and Bracket. Now at Parkgate Lock, but just look at this lock keeper's cottage. Beautiful, eh? It's even better for the fact it's got its own private mooring as well. That would be heaven. There's a new chandlery just opened up that's replaced Midland Chandlers. It's Parkgate Leisure uh, Chandlery. And they are well stocked in there, well worth a, a stop and looking in there if you're coming this way. Well, today is Easter Friday, and what a beautiful day, isn't it? Huh? It's fantastic. It's fantastic, as you can see, look, we've got clear blue skies above us. And uh, today we're heading for Penkridge, hopefully, if we Penkridge. can get more in there. Yeah, we're getting closer now to our dental appointment, so we're um, heading into Penkridge. Just on the other side of the town is a marina that we're booked into, and uh, then we're going to take the trip up to Chester for our dental appointments. So um, today will be the last day, then we go into the marina tomorrow. So we'll see how we go. We're on the Staff of Worcester now, so we're at the bottom of what's known as the Four Counties Ring. Uh, the Four Counties being Warwickshire, Staffordshire, Cheshire, and I always forget the other one. Uh, it's not Worcestershire, is it? Yes, once again our apologies, our bow camera failed on us once more. But this time my mobile phone also died on me and we didn't get a chance to recharge it. But it was literally only a half hour journey into uh, Penkridge where we moored up, uh, just above Penkridge Lock. So then in the afternoon we had a little wander around the town itself. You can guess where Chris is. The church is 47 metres long or 154 feet and it's made of local sandstone. It's in the form of an aisled chancel, aisled nave, west tower, south porch and northwest vestry. The chancel is dated 1225 and predates the nave by possibly 25 years. The remains of the 13th century roof line can also be seen in the interior. The tower is dominant with the lower section decorated and the upper section perpendicular gothic. The style of the building is early English perpendicular and all traces of earlier churches of Saxon or Norman origin have now totally disappeared. <laughs> 